Hello everyone, this is Jim Loop. I'm here from Jimcast. I'm here to very loudly and obnoxiously recite a uh, standard article and then give you my hot take political opinion and upload it with no editing whatsoever to monetize on YouTube. Hello, today is December 16th, 2019. Eric and Lara Trump declare victory in the war on Christmas. That's right, you heard it here first, folks. You're once again free to put up a Christmas tree. Thank freaking fucking God. Otherwise, who knows what would have happened. I personally, a veteran of the war on Christmas, remember distinctly one of my good friends being shot in the back of the head because he refused to switch to Happy Holidays. It was a dark time, and thank God we've moved beyond it. We're well into the 12 days of the war on Christmas now, where the lead-up to the most ubiquitous holiday in the history of human civilization is punctuated by fears that the same holiday is under attack. Of course it's under attack. Of course. Have you not seen the liberal media? That's all they do, is attack. They attack random ass things. And by which I mean they just vaguely inconvenience other people and mildly annoy them by thinking that somehow something very intrinsic and deeply involved inside of their own core central being like what kind of magic sky leopard they worship is suddenly not being respected by people they will literally never meet. The greeting, Happy Holidays, is not, you see, a small and voluntary gesture meant to welcome many faith traditions to the American experience. Predicated on the idea, this is a nation for anyone willing to honor the values of a free society. Instead, the phrase is a heat-seeking missile launched at the Yuletide, an insidious plot to erase Christmas from American life. They're absolutely correct. They're absolutely correct here. I don't care whether or not this actually turns out to be a satirical article or not, because I do not put that much effort into anything I do whatsoever. By the way, look forward to my upcoming GoFundMe for $1 million to sit in my house and scream in my camera. I hope you will consider donating. Thank you very much. Luckily, we've recently learned that Donald Trump, American president, has already won the war on Christmas. Of course he has. The man can literally do nothing but win. A group of people, which definitely exists, were trying to stop other people saying Merry Christmas. Of course they were. They're called liberals. But Donald Trump stopped them from stopping people from saying it. He literally was out there in the street. He and his battalion of MAGAs were out there in body armor and uh, fully automatic assault weapons. And anytime somebody kind of tried to en enact the actual political violence, political violence of demanding people say Happy Holidays instead of Merry Christmas, which totally 100% absolutely happened. Our beloved president, whom, by the way, I'm actually very left-leaning and very liberal, I, I'm just saying this to be fair, was out there defending our freedoms. Meanwhile, the liberals can do nothing but cry. But I digress. In conclusion, we're saying Merry Christmas again, folks, yet such is the power of a mass delusion fueled by simmering resentment that somehow, even though the war was won, the defenders of Christmas still feel it necessary to constantly discuss the war. Well, of course we do. Of course, I mean, they do. Because war is eternal. War never changes. Haha, -ha, fellow gamers. I bet you know what game that is from. And how there was definitely a real time where you couldn't say Merry Christmas in America. Yes, it's called the Obama administration. What are you thinking? Just ask Eric and Lara Trump two members of the extended first family who celebrated the victory while holding on the requisite level of bitterness about the whole thing on Fox. Let's check this out. Eric and I were talking about what's going on with impeachment and the FISA and all that, but will you guys be able to just forget about all of it and really enjoy the fact that you really are part of the first family? You are the first family? I mean, you... you it's an excellent question. Can you, while, while having... To, to be uh, the extended first family of the president and weathering out the emotional torment and storm that is uh, your father being held to account for some of the crimes he's committed, I mean, <clears throat> allegedly, and is obviously incorrectly assumed to be committed. You know what I mean, Freedom Fighters. Uh, can you still, in fact, kiss under the mistletoe? Hard-hitting reporting here. We've done wonderful things for this country. We now don't have uh, the political correctness that we used to. I mean, people are actually saying Merry Christmas. You can say Merry Christmas again. Yes, Isn't that yes. so nice, Janine? I love it. I love Christmas trees. I love Santa over here. I mean... Who does not like Christmas trees and Santa? 
Who does not? And thank God we have this reporter here from Fox News to remind us all of what is really important in life. Other times, if you go to the libtard media, you're going to find articles out there about homeless people turning into literal ice cubes and freezing and dying in the streets en masse because of inadequate amount of money and social programs. They might say something like, well, isn't there a, an issue with us spending damn near three, three quarters of a trillion dollars to create a space force? Meanwhile, literally veterans are freezing to death in the street. They might say that, but that's just a distraction. A distraction from the things that are most important in life. Things like Christmas trees and saying Merry Christmas and praising Jesus Christ. Very brave reporting from Fox News. You know, how do you feel that your, your father has done all of that, Eric? It's incredible. It is nice to say Merry Christmas again. And it is a yeah. beautiful thing to celebrate all the holidays with beautiful little kids like this. I mean, this is what America is all about. And this is what... Is, is that... Is that his child? Or is that, is that, that's a very strange way to address your own child. Like this random child that I picked up. Look, <clears throat> obviously that is a war orphan. Uh, that, uh, what's, which Trump is that? Eric Trump uh, adopted uh, because of the, uh, the, the terrible violence that was enacted in the Middle East, uh, thanks to Obama. <clears throat> the American dream's all about, and... You know, this is why we have an incredible country, because we can sit there with the Santa Claus and with beautiful trees and eat ice cream and open presents and love one another and, you know, and... and thank God, thank God the war is over. During that time when all we had to say was happy holidays and not Merry Christmas, we had somehow were taken away the ability to love one another and eat ice cream. It's true, ladies and gentlemen, the, 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 the Cold War is over and ice cream is once again available to eat. I know for some of us it's been many, many years. See little ones grow and it's, um, it, it's, it's the best of this nation and, and I'm proud of him for reinvigorating so much of it. Yes, thank you President Trump for bringing back ice cream and love to America. Now... It's important that we understand where this whole thing comes from, of course. Wh who is really to blame about the war on Christmas? Well, eight times in history when a war on Christmas actually happened, uh, I don't know what it actually is about because it's been a constant perpetual war, but all the same. You see right there, that is a freedom-loving Santa Claus. Uh, that is a Santa Claus that loves America, loves Trump, and loves God. <clears throat> Starting with Bill O'Reilly in the early 2000s, many figures on the American political right have argued that there is an ongoing war on Christmas, and they were absolutely correct. Observers have questioned the reality of such a conflict, given the holiday's prominent place in U.S. culture. But throughout history, governments and societies, including certain Christian sects, have tried to do away with the festivities. Of course, because they are soy-drenched libtards. Every December, Americans take part in a time-honored tradition letting slip the dogs of war on Christmas, those evil, vile atheists. Some folks assert that there is a concerted effort in American society to secularize or erase Christmas, while others call this belief ludicrous. Ha! Ludicrous! Ha! What next? What else is ludicrous? Changing your gender? My God! This is absolutely ridiculous! Writing in Politico, Daniel Danvir estimates that most recent iteration of the clash began in 2004 with ousted Fox News personality Bill O'Reilly, or as I call him, Big Daddy Billy. Since then, the war on Christmas has become tarted up, 24-houred, and twitterized, even as it has grown drearily routine, an annual pageant in which culture warriors line the trenches, Danvir wrote. I don't really quite understand what that sentence even said. The results? Xmas. Xmas. The X word. I apologize for some of my more sensitive viewers out there. I will try not to actually say that word. We will refer to it as the X word. But we had to make sure, for the sake of journalistic, you know, for the sake of journalistic integrity, I chose to say the word twice, and I stand by my usage of it. But now, out of respect to you, we will call it the X word. <clears throat> Has got a bad rap in some circles. U.S. President Donald Trump has shouted about bringing back Merry Christmas at rallies, while first daughter Ivanka Trump stoked the controversy by wishing people happy holidays on Twitter. The Yuletide tension between the first family notwithstanding, this fearsome fight mostly occurs between pundits. Business insiders Mark Abadi reports, most people don't give two sugar plums about your choice of season greetings. 
Excellent writing from him. Thank you very much for that. And it's true, uh, there was a bit of tension uh, where Ivanka was, in fact, uh, disowned, I, I believe, or I might be making that up completely, uh, for saying happy holidays once, but thankfully she has now been reined back in line. <clears throat> anyway, as we are over the 10 minute mark now, I'm just going to quickly summarize the rest of this because I've already got my monetization, because that is what this channel is all about. A group of radical Christians outlawed Christmas and sparked riots in 17th century England. Obviously liberals. Many early American colonists hated Christmas too. Liberals. Of course they were liberals. What else would they be? French revolutionaries rebranded Christmas cakes and renamed the holiday Dog Day. Those were communists. Those were actual communists. That's right. Uh, and half of them, I do believe, were violent Antifa members. Nazis rewrote Christmas carols to reflect their fascist ideology. Well, everybody knows that Nazis are socialists. The Soviet Union shoved the festivities back to the new year. Communists, of course. Fidel Castro canceled. Can we really? Do we even need to mention this? Do we even need to talk about this? Like, seriously. Seriously. Obviously. Castro, of course. Brunei won't let people celebrate the holiday excessively and openly. Sounds like a bunch of Islamist uh, bullshit. Saudi Arabia still arrests people for plotting to throw Christmas parties. Well, listen, uh, Saudi Arabia uh, has every right to exercise their freedom of speech, um, especially because of how much money we make in oil off of them and our foreign trade. Uh, so I see absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. They're just exercising their freedom of speech. That's all there is to it. I'm Jim Loop. Thank you very much. This has been the Jim Cast. Bye-bye, everybody.